So Naomi, welcome. Thank you. A fabulous book that you've just launched, Positively Confidential. Um, and I've really learned quite a bit just hearing you speak. And I just wondered today if you would be interested in giving some feedback for women entrepreneurs. Um, obviously, your uh, information about IP is important for women entrepreneurs generally, but also particularly if they're going for VC funding. So I wondered if you could uh, tell me, is, it, is confidential confidentiality more or less relevant to women entrepreneurs than men? I think that confidentiality is equally relevant. The okay. question is, what is a predisposition of a woman to protecting something as confidential versus men? And I've worked with many women entrepreneurs okay. who tend to feel that it's important to share their good ideas and yeah. with their enthusiasm for their new product, they may tend to be more generous with what they divulge okay. and be less careful about protecting their information. Interesting. And protecting information is so key, particularly in today's marketplace, because by protecting information, you help to establish it as a trade secret, which is a very important part of intellectual property and the intellectual property portfolio. And it's also the foundation of having patents. So if you are going for funding and you've got an entrepreneurial company, one of the most important things is for you to show that you've got intellectual property assets. And I always advise entrepreneurs, and particularly women entrepreneurs, because they uh, tend to value what they have less. And so mm. by going through the information that they've developed and thinking about how they've solved problems, they can identify the, that information, those ideas, as intellectual property, which right. helps them to increase the value of their company, which helps them to get funding. And it would increase confidence too, I would imagine, because then it becomes much more tangible and real what you're contributing, correct? That is absolutely correct. It, it, I have I worked with an entrepreneur, a woman who had a uh, fitness-related company, right. and uh, she didn't even think she had intellectual property. Yeah. And it wasn't until after we had a long talk that she went through this process of really inventorying what she had, and when she realized how much she developed in terms of new ideas and innovative thinking and combining fitness with uh, the social networking uh, infrastructure that she came to believe that she had something even more valuable than what she knew before. It's an ongoing problem, I think, for women. I remember years ago, a friend of mine at La Trobe University in Melbourne told me that women tend not to even um, acknowledge their success as their success, they often accredit it to other people. And I think we do tend to be a little bit too open <laughs> to our, our ecosystem or our environment and acknowledging rather than getting that clarity. That sounds so uh, fascinating and exciting to me that you know that sort of process that you did with that woman could actually give her some sense of a container of what, what it is she's actually doing. That's really great. Yes. And I wondered um, how, how women can protect the information that they have to share with VCs and angels when they're going for investment or funding. So this is such an important question because there's this balance between wanting to share information that will make the VC or angel funder interested in the investment uh, and at the same time holding back and letting them know that you have the maturity and sophistication to not reveal information that is very confidential unless there's some agreement or understanding that it will be kept confidential. So I always recommend to my entrepreneur clients that they ask the uh, VC firm or the angel investment firm what their policy is around confidentiality. And some will actually say, we don't want to receive any confidential information mm -hmm. because we will not be bound by any kind of confidentiality restrictions. Yeah. And if that's the case, then in a presentation to that funding source, the woman entrepreneur could say something like, you know, we've got an algorithm for our software that is highly proprietary. We'd like to tell you about it here. 
here, but as a VC that's let us know that your policy is not to maintain confidentiality, we aren't in a position to divulge that information because if we did, we could diminish our intellectual assets, which are part of what makes our company so valuable. Yeah. So actually using it, I mean, as you know, the name of my book is Positively Confidential. Yes. And the point is that it is a very, it can be a very positive aspect of selling a company to say that you have the maturity and sophistication to protect your intellectual assets. Mm -hmm. So by presenting it in that way is very helpful. And some VCs will say, well, we will not sign an NDA, mm. uh, but what do you need from us in order to share what we need to know to figure out if this is a good investment or not? And then you have an opportunity to say to them, well, I understand that you will not sign a contractual agreement indicating that you'll be legally obligated to protect our information, but could we agree between us that you will not share this information with our direct competitors? And if they say yes to that, and then you follow up in a written uh, email or letter to them, thanking them for their time and, and for reviewing your investment, and at the same time reinforcing that, you know, as you know, sir or madam, we presented our ideas, including some very confidential information. We know you won't sign an NDA, but we hope you will at least abide by the agreement that you made with us that you won't be sharing it with our direct competitors. Right. And again, this is very positive. It says that you are astute. It says that you are mature as a business person in protecting your intellectual assets, which is going to be very important to a VC or other potential funder in your business. And I know you mentioned about Facebook and, and that whole drama that happened with the Vinkel boss twins. Yes. <laughs> um, and I wondered, because there's many stories floating around the venture capital industry about VCs who have listened to people's uh, ideas and then used them, yes. misused them. And is there any legal recourse if we went through this process, um, as you're suggesting, to um, be as protective as we can and to institute those, you know, that in writing, uh, even though that we're not getting an NDA? Is there any at all legal recourse? Well, if you don't have a non-disclosure agreement in place yeah. and you have freely divulged information to another person or organization, uh, you probably don't have legal recourse unless there's some implied agreement. Now, I did mention the Facebook situation with the Winklevoss mm. twins, and because they settled, we really don't know all the facts of that case. Yes. But from what we saw in the movie, there was no requirement of a vow of secrecy on yes. Mark Zuckerberg's uh, behalf or that he would sign an NDA. And yet in that case, the Winklevoss twins did get a $65 million settlement. So what could be the basis of that settlement is that there is this implied agreement that when you work with someone, you have okay. an implied agreement to protect their intellectual property and specifically their secrets and confidential information. So right. that's been implied in case law for decades right. and, been, and that is enforceable. But that is very different from a non-contractual uh, arrangement such as a non-employee, employer arrangement or yes. non-vendor and, uh, and hiring yes. uh, person relationship. So really what I'm hearing is that we don't have as much um, protection when we are taking our ideas out there to funders. That's right. Okay. You don't, in fact, the only place there may be some protection is with an employee. Because a contractor, a vendor without a contract, in most cases they own the results of their work. Even right. if you've paid for them to develop whatever it is they, they're developing. Interesting. Uh, so without a contract, to the contrary, there's an assumption that a third party contractor or vendor owns the results of their work. Mm very much. It's a great education. <laughs> um, so um, you've given us some great feedback about why we need to be much more aware and I'm definitely much more aware of this now. Um, but is there anything else that you'd like to add about f for women entrepreneurs about confidentiality? 
Yeah, I think also women tend to be more trusting generally with people and uh, one of the things that confidentiality can do is to provide a stronger basis for trust. So while women tend to want to share information and feel believe that, you know, if the other person seems like a nice person and a, you know, an intelligent person, they might be more inclined to share with them. And I think it's important for women to know that uh, in this world a lot of people are not aware of how many people are out there whether they be spies or people who are conducting economic espionage or uh, competitive intelligence to try to gather information about what's happening in the business world that there are people out there with malicious intent who will take information and use it against the best interest of the women entrepreneur. Uh, and I think we tend to be, we as women, uh, tend to be more, more trusting than the actual environment suggests that we should be. I mean, there, there's also reason to be very positive and to, uh, to feel that there are good reasons to uh, engage with others. Um, but it's so important to just, uh, you know, trust, but with a strong foundation for that trust, even if it's someone that you know. Because uh, in the organizations that I work with, so I work primarily with Fortune 500 companies, yes. and I'm often asking them about you know, where they perceive is the highest risk of losing their most valuable information. And interestingly enough, oftentimes it's from inadvertence or lack of awareness. Uh -huh. In other words, people engage in a conversation with somebody, they think, oh, this is an interesting person, uh, I want to be helpful to them, and so I will share information without thinking, yes. this could be very valuable to the company. This may be confidential. Uh, there's another aspect to information, which is that when we are working, for example, entrepreneurs, women or men, it, when you're in startup mode, you are working 190% of your time, at maybe you know all, all, every waking and uncon unconscious hour of your yes. time on the startup, yes. and so it may start to feel like it's commonplace. It's something that you are so familiar with yes. that you forget when somebody else asks you about what you're working on that actually it's very valuable. It is not com it's common to you because you live it, eat it, yes. breathe it, sleep it, yes. but it's not common to everyone, yes. and it may be something very valuable to protect. Yes. So that's another thing to keep Really, in mind. really good um, lighting the lamp of awareness, yes. and um, and it certainly has um, opened my eyes. I really appreciated meeting you and hearing your feedback, and of course, hopefully, everyone will buy your book, uh, uh, Positively yeah, Confidential, I, I, I on your website. I just want to say this is uh, this is a book that I think can really help. Yes. entrepreneurs because entrepreneurs are so busy doing so many things and confidentiality and establishing intellectual property is so important yes. so to have the ultimate how-to guide that makes it easy that consolidates in a very comprehensive way what anyone needs to know about confidentiality and protecting information I think could be really helpful yes I think it's valuable very valuable and um, you've certainly got a fan in me thank you very Great. much thank